Okay, and uh, next I would like to invite uh, Dr. Eva Miloski Bodnar from the Ministry of Justice of Hungary to talk about uh, European national competition policy and the impact on big data. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Eva Miskolci Bodner and uh, working as a government official uh, in the Ministry of Justice. And with this background, uh, I would like to uh, present you the implication of uh, big data and big data analytics on competition law um, um, and competition policy. So. The growth of uh, digital economy raises competition law and enforcement challenges at at least two uh, distinct uh, levels. First, at the practical level, uh, enforcers must uh, face uh, the added complexity of uh, conducting their assessment uh, in a dynamic environment and on the digital economy. There is quite a few uncertainties uh, concerning this quite new sector as, uh, for example, to the nature of competitive pressures, the uh, ability of markets to self-correct, uh, the likely harms and efficiencies, and um, not to mention disruptive innovation in this market. It raises the question whether existing competition legislation is enough in its current form to deal with the new phenomenon of uh, digital market, or it must be updated uh, somehow, uh, adding specific rules uh, to this sector in a competition law framework. The second uh, challenge is at the policy level. Uh, new competition dynamics raise questions as to the normative scope of competition law and enforcement. The question, is this a competition problem at all? has uh, become common regarding new business strategies, uh, the accumulation and use of big data um, has become uh, quite uh, uh, common. Uh, these questions, the optimal use of competition law, uh, its goals and values and correlations with other fields and policies. So here our basic question is, uh, whether competition law may or even shall consider other policies. So let's start uh, with our first question. Is there a need for additional competition uh, legislation in uh, competition law? Policymakers uh, should ensure that any new industry specific uh, regulations is indeed necessary and effective. So it is important to consider the costs and benefits uh, of the proposed rules to ensure that these rules uh, introduce minimum administrative burdens of market, on market players. So to answer this question, it must be first examined whether using big data and big data analytics is a game changer indeed. So that requires a different approach from the legislator and uh, the law enforcers as well. Okay. So uh, there are two different views in the academic debate. Uh, one that sees big data as a business as usual uh, and states that the ex existing competition law toolkit can work perfectly or at least sufficiently well uh, in its current form. Uh, and it is able to tackle mergers, collusions, and uh, abuses of market power in the data economy, just as well as in any other sector. The other group of scholars uh, clearly disagrees with this point, uh, and they point to those specificities of big data that render standard competition law analysis ineffective. So to properly assess uh, its implications, we must fully understand the ways in which companies use big data and the nature of the competition uh, among these firms. Uh, 
So far, several trends have been observed in this regard. Um, just to mention a few, uh, at a micro level, the value of data uh, has changed the traditional relationship between consumers and uh, producers. Uh, sometimes the data itself is so valuable that companies are willing to offer free services um, or seemingly free services in, uh, in order to obtain these data. As such, um, data becomes an essential asset um, and may provide sizable first mover advantage uh, to these firms. Because of the specific features of digital markets, competition between these firms uh, will often take uh, takes an, a rather distinctive form. Um, these uh, issues were already covered earlier, but just to mention uh, the specific features in these markets, uh, competition between business models or platforms tends to be much more important than competition within one business model uh, because platform competition often leads to a winner-takes-all outcome. So that's the tipping of the market. Uh, another uh, uh, important uh, characteristic is the strong direct and indirect network effects uh, and economies of scale uh, that is quite common on the, in this sector. Um, we have already covered uh, two and multi-sided uh, markets and uh, platforms. Um, the firms, um, between the firms, uh, economy becomes increasingly interconnected. So uh, the degree of coordination and cooperation uh, is unavo unavoidable and uh, still it's uh, really competitive. So it's, it's not an anti, uh, it doesn't have any anti-competitive effect. And uh, na to name the last characteristic, um, high rates of investment and innovation is uh, uh, inevitable and it can lead uh, to a rapid technological progress and in this sense uh, digital market can uh, be uh, uh, said to be a dynamic market. So, uh, many competition authorities issued reports on the implication of big data uh, with regard uh, to competition policy. Um, for example, uh, the United Kingdom, uh, um, there was uh, the joint report uh, of the German and French competition authorities uh, or uh, the Canadian uh, competition office. Many other Many other uh, member states are considering uh, doing so and uh, they are launching uh, sector-specific uh, inquiries or fact-finding surveys, uh, just like uh, Italy or uh, the Hungarian uh, government office. The majority of all these reports concludes that existing competition rules can be applied in the data-driven market um, without uh, any further change. The national competition authorities and the Commission, the European Commission, have the necessary legal instruments needed to take measures against companies uh, that abuse their dominant, uh, dominant position on the market uh, or uh, the needed instruments and toolkits uh, to block mergers uh, in, in cases where uh, the new entities uh, will gain a dominant position. So competition law provisions are generically formulated and uh, they apply in a wide variety of factual circumstances. Um, this allows competition authorities to adapt uh, their instruments to the particularities of uh, this sector and market and uh, they do not, to, uh, do not have to apply specific methods uh, rigidly. Regarding law enforcement, uh, the fundamental aspects of the analytical framework, such as uh, 
just it was mentioned earlier, um, defining uh, the relevant market, uh, the market power of the firms or the competitive effects and the abusive uh, conduct. Uh, these uh, aspects should continue to be applicable in the same form, uh, although uh, big data can raise new challenges for the competition authorities um, in the enforcement uh, and may require uh, the use of uh, uh, tools that are somewhat specialized. So uh, just to uh, sum up, um, the, uh, because these reports conclude that uh, we don't uh, need uh, any uh, main change uh, in the legislative framework, uh, but there may be uh, some uh, sector-specific uh, use of the toolkits of the competition analysis. At least so far, competition agencies have been cautious when big data has come up as an issue and have not proactively intervened at all. Of course, there are certain uh, risks stemming from not timely or indeed wrong intervention uh, in this field, in the dynamic markets, uh, but it can be justified. We should keep in mind that the temporary dominance is the price that for which the companies are competing. So enforcement that limits uh, the ability uh, the ability to achieve this dominance may chill uh, the innovation and in this way it is uh, counterproductive. In merger review, the risk of uh, ex-ante intervention may chill innovation uh, and this has uh, led some many uh, to call for more laissez-faire approach in this sense and there were many critics that uh, an intervention uh, by the competition authorities uh, in mergers uh, may count as unjustified market regulation or uh, it uh, uh, can play a role as uh, uh, the protection of competitors uh, who otherwise would fall out of the market uh, when they are competing on the merit. On the other hand, Risk associated with large networks and platforms and their impact on uh, competing innovators uh, and the tipping of the market uh, by the merged entity uh, may call for greater scrutiny. So proper enforcement uh, must strike the right balance between taking steps uh, to prevent behavior that truly harms the competition and on the other hand, it must avoid enforcement that chills innovation. There is one field uh, where legislative steps were actually taken uh, and uh, other uh, legislative proposals uh, were launched. Uh, and it was in the field of merger control thresholds. The adequacy uh, of the current thresholds has been questioned recently in the context of uh, increasing number of acquisitions of uh, digital startups. So such companies will often fail to generate a high turnover at first, in the uh, first few years. Um, however, the corporate value may be significant um, as a result of the degree of innovation. So the data sets they have acquired in their market presence in terms of users uh, makes them quite valuable uh, for larger companies to acquire. And this value causes the conflict between high purchase prices and a low turnover of uh, these uh, target companies. So the Commission launched a public consultation on the potential reform of uh, European merger control thresholds in 2016. Uh, the proposed changes aim to simplify uh, the current functioning of European merger control. Uh, one of the objectives is, uh, 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 
it was the effectiveness of the current turnover-based jurisdictional thresholds uh, to be changed. One of the questions discussed was whether and how to capture uh, these uh, acquisitions where uh, the target company uh, is uh, um, a small uh, company with a non-existing or uh, very uh, small turnover, uh, but uh, with a data-driven uh, uh, valuable database. Meanwhile, uh, in the member state level, Germany and Austria introduced additional value-based uh, value thresholds in 2017, similar to those uh, proposed by the European Commission. As a result, even if the turno uh, turnover-based thresholds are not met, these acquisitions are uh, notifiable uh, to the competition authorities if the value of the transaction considerations uh, exceed uh, 400 million euros in Germany or 200 million euros in Austria, and if the target company has significant current domestic uh, activities. With adding such a criteria, the company's potential and uh, therefore uh, its competitive relevance will not be overlooked anymore. So the recent preemptive mergers that took place in the European Union have raised some serious concerns that uh, there is a substantial harm uh, to privacy in data-driven markets, where consumers have surrendered control over their personal data. This leads to the very question of the outer limits of competition law and in how far it should take into consideration broader and non-economic concerns. At this point, uh, we must uh, look back at our starting point, the first slide, uh, where we raised the second question, is this a competition problem at all? Uh, because even if the development of technology gives rise to a clear need for changing policy, it must be assessed within uh, which field of law is the most uh, reliable, the most suitable to tackle the problem. So recently, authorities are facing more and more frequently with the overlapping policies of competition, consumer protection, and privacy protection. To decide whether competition policy is adept to deal with an issue, first look briefly at the main goals. Sorry, uh, the main goals of European competition uh, law, uh, which may determine its scope. So. Um, here I will just uh, look uh, briefly on the uh, core values, uh, which is uh, uh, the consumer welfare, uh, the fair allocation of resources, uh, and uh, not only the protect, uh, protection of uh, the interests of competitors and market players, but also the structure of the market itself and as such, the promotion of uh, European market integration. Where our initial two questions uh, combines uh, to each other is the issue of non-price competition. When services are offered for free, firms are competing on quality. This quality may take a lot of uh, kind of forms. Uh, but it is conceivable that in some cases consumers may view privacy as an important element of quality. As a result, uh, it could be a relevant dimension of competition between firms uh, and such a form uh, of non-price competition. Uh, so it should uh, be part of the competition analysis. Uh, at least many academics reached this conclusion, uh, but whether it is accepted also in the practice uh, by the law enforcement agencies, uh, let's see uh, the European case law just very briefly. Um, so far, uh, in almost all of the uh, European merger cases, 
um, the opinion of the European Commission uh, was that privacy concerns are falling outside of the scope of intervention of uh, competition authorities. Uh, I would mention only the last uh, case uh, where there was a clear shift uh, regarding uh, the approach of uh, the European Commission uh, and it said that important parameter can be uh, the privacy uh, and as such uh, non-price competition factor in merger control assessments uh, may be taken into account to the extent that consumers so it uh, so privacy as a significant factor in the quality of the services offered. So decisions taken by an undertaking regarding the collection and use of personal data can have in parallel implications on economic and competition dimensions. So we can see that uh, the last case law uh, in, uh, of, of the European Commission is in line uh, with uh, the opinion of uh, national competition agencies uh, that uh, uh, point out that privacy policies could be considered uh, from a competition standpoint whenever these policies are liable to affect competition. Just to uh, name, uh, name the first, uh, the basic characteristics uh, of the cases where this kind of, uh, uh, the, uh, the issues of uh, privacy uh, can be taken into account is uh, according to the French and G uh, German competition agency, is that um, the case where a firm is dominant and the data serves as a main input of its products. Uh, privacy concerns may be taken into account because uh, there will be a close link between the dominance of the company, the data collection processes and the competition on the relevant market in these cases. So thank you very much. Thank you, Eva. Questions? Thanks for a great presentation. Just a quick question. You mentioned a lot about all the different sort of European jurisdictions and each country sort of going off and commissioning their own reports. Uh, do you think we need a more unified approach maybe to, and specifically to data-driven mergers? A lot of these companies can be sort of multinational, spanning a lot of jurisdictions. Are there things that you're aware of of where sort of a unified approach is being taken to that? Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, so actually, uh, in the case of uh, data-driven mergers, um, now at least uh, the competition uh, uh, um, the, um, the European Commission and uh, competition uh, field is uh, taking into account uh, that uh, this uh, policy, uh, policies, other kind of policies than competition issues may be taken into account. So that's, uh, I would say, as a nice first step um, in this sense. Um, um, so just as I said, uh, the European uh, legislative measures are really fr um, framed and worded uh, in a generic sense, um, and uh, everything, the data uh, uh, that can be taken into account in a competition analysis uh, is uh, uh, based and uh, regulated in guidelines. So maybe, um, I would say, uh, to achieve a more uh, harmonized approach uh, between the national authorities and the European Commission, uh, it can be uh, justified to, um, for example, issue um, an updated version of uh, guidelines uh, 
for, uh, for the purpose of dealing uh, with mergers in the data-driven market. Thanks. I actually have a question. Oh. Um, you said that uh, a harmonized approach between national councils, and we heard this morning at the first uh, uh, presentation how banks here in Latvia, based on Latvian law, are able to collect personal data, uh, including <coughs> spending patterns, which is at the request of the government. Do you see that as a problem? Uh, I mean, some governments will say this is an invasion of privacy, a total invasion of privacy, versus the Latvian government, which says, no, this is fine. <laughs> yes. Um, so many government uh, would, uh, um, I, I think, uh, reject these uh, issues as uh, based on uh, contractual freedom. Um, so based on the terms and conditions uh, between, for example, the banks and uh, their consumers, uh, if uh, there is uh, consent uh, um, by uh, the consumers to... Uh, to but we're not sometimes given that option here, to consent. <laughs> this is the issue. Yes, yes, uh, that's right. Uh, and I think uh, that's... Um, what calls for a uh, harmonized approach as well, but uh, to uh, to achieve uh, such approach, uh, I think uh, it's uh, it's not for uh, the member states uh, governments uh, to to deal with the issue because uh, it it will never be uh, the same, uh, but um, to launch uh, another. Uh, proposal by the European Commission uh, to uh, to deal with uh, uh, sector-specific issues, for example, the, in this uh, banking sector. Thank you. There's Thank one you. more question over there. I will just take the microphone. Uh, thank you. Uh, for, from my side, it's more like comment, maybe, about banks. <laughs> and so many data processing which banks are carrying out. Um, basically, the reason is anti-money laundering regulation, uh, which is also a very significant issue. And I suppose that uh, legislator, they should balance all this issue of privacy and also anti-money laundering, which is also aims to prevent terrorism financing. And uh, these two issues should find the balance. Of course, we can uh, discuss uh, where is this burden? It's under discussion, I think, uh, uh, in all credit institutions. Uh, however, yes, there is, it's not like just banks process data and uh, government just ask it to do, but the government ask it to do for some uh, reasons. So, and it just comment. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Any questions, any more questions? No? Okay, thank you, Eva.